And those three transformative habits are wake up early, plan your weeks, and do quarterly retreats to evaluate the past quarter and plan the next quarter. Welcome to the Let's Talk Business Podcast, a project of the PTEX Group. Gain valuable, actionable ideas from the world's top business leaders to help you take the next step in your business journey. And now, here is your host, Manny Hoffman. Coming to you from the PTEX headquarters in Brooklyn, New York. This is the podcast for no-nonsense advice to help you learn, grow, and lead. Today, I'm so excited to welcome back our guest, Clay Mask. Clay is the co-founder of Keep, formerly Infusionsoft. And in our conversation, we uncover valuable insights from Clay's journey in revolutionizing small business operations through automation and his latest book, Conquer the Chaos 2.0. Clay shares his inspiring journey from developing a CRM tool for direct response marketers to creating a comprehensive automation platform that empowers small business owners. He emphasizes the importance of achieving not just growth, but also profitability and freedom, providing key takeaways that can help entrepreneurs elevate their operations to new heights. In this episode, we also explore the roller coaster of entrepreneurship, focusing on the critical aspects of mindset, personal vision, and the rhythm of execution. Clayton and I delve into personal stories and research-backed strategies to help you navigate the height and lows of running a business. Learn how setting personal goals separate from business objectives can assure a fulfilling life beyond the dream of your enterprise. Without further ado, here is my interview with Clay Mask. Clay Mask, thank you so much for joining me on the Let's Talk Business Podcast. Many great to be with you. It's been a while. Yeah, absolutely. So for our listeners, uh, it's, this is not the first episode I'm doing with Clay. It's very early on, and this is going back probably two, two and a half years, we had you on the show. Um, and for our listeners that did not listen to that episode, I encourage you to go back and listen. We'll also put this in the show notes. Um, so we'll just do a brief introduction as far as the past and how you got started. And then ultimately, um, now where Keep is, um, you know, the company Keep is, is up to. But I really want to focus a lot on the recent book you just published, which is 2.0 of Conquer the Chaos. Awesome. That sounds great. I look forward to it. Okay, so for our listeners that never heard Clay Mass, never heard about you, never heard me speaking about Keep or anything like that, tell us a little bit about what, you know, how you got started to this space of automation and ultimately what's Keep all about. Yeah, maybe just to cut right to the chase, then I'll give a little background. So Keep is small business automation. We help small businesses grow by automating their entire business from marketing to sales, service, internal operations, and helping them not just grow the business, but do it profitably, get the freedom that they want. Because so often small businesses, even if they're growing, they're not getting the the profit, the freedom. And it, you know, it causes, causes frustration because we, we don't achieve what we were after in the first place. So that's what we do. It's all about automating small businesses. And the way we got started was many years ago, we began working with some people in marketing, their direct response marketers, and they needed to automate the follow-up in their in their um, direct response marketing campaigns. And so we worked with them, created a CRM product, started helping them to automate these campaigns. And at the time, there was no such thing as marketing automation. It didn't even exist. Was it called Managed Pro CRM or something? <laughs> <Yes>. like- <laughs> wow, that's a blast from the past. That's right. Yeah, it was it was like a CRM product that that was kind of marketing flavored. And then more and more direct response marketers began using it because they realized that they could automate their campaigns and make sure that the follow-up was happening, that the right message was going to the right person at the right time, whether it was by email or direct mail or a phone call or, or what have you. And so that's how it got started. It got started as a CRM product that was sort of geared toward direct response marketers. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember if we go back to, you know, in the memory lane, I remember the, the term that I've used when I searched for a product until I got to the product. I think at that point, I don't remember what the name was. I think maybe it was already called Infusion. So just had the black and red logo at the time. Yeah. And I was actually frustrated because I, I, we had different services we offered. Everybody was in a different date that we need to reach out. We need to collect payment, different things. And I said, it got to be a better way of having multiple Excel files at the time. 
and that's when I reached out to um, 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 and and I found I found the software and and I've been connected ever since. And I think for our listeners, I just have to do this this disclaimer because we have had many episodes on the concept of automation in general. And I think I think um, just to let our audience know, now we're talking about Keep, which is an actual product. It's not just automating and and connecting one app to the other, which obviously it is one of those apps that you would connect to. But we're talking about the concept of automating you, part of your sales and marketing, even for internal use within the CRM, within the software itself as well. So, and I, obviously I think uh, people that don't know more about Keep um, don't know that obviously the, I think the term automation wasn't even a thing when you started. Right. <laughs> That's right. In fact, um, I remember, you know, marketing automation was not a category. People, you know, there it, people didn't really understand it. And I remember us talking about it saying, well, what do we call this thing? Because, you know, we're, we're doing this automated follow up to, to, you know, in these marketing campaigns. And, and we decided to call it marketing automation. And I remember it sounded so strange. Like, the, like as the words came out, it felt like saying purple zebra or something. <laughs> it was like, it was just such a, it, it wasn't a thing. Nobody understood it. But marketing automation came, you know, for small businesses came to be what we do. And it, you know, it just started to take off. And, and what hap- what's happened over the years is that once people start automating their marketing, they start to see, oh, wait, I, I want to automate, automate the sales process. And then I want to automate everything I can after the sales process in the customer, you know, the customer service experience. And then where the, where the magic really happens is, people start to automate everything internally. And when they begin to automate their internal workflows, their internal SOPs, um, that's that's when I think people really get hooked on automation in just a, a really fun way. Obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to some of the automation and some of it, how it actually applies to everyday businesses. But... Obviously, I owe you a lot of gratitude, and I think we have discussed it in the for, in the in the in the, in the past um, episode, and we spoke about it a lot. And it's because two things: I think you're leading your company from the heart. Um, obviously, it's been something that I've been able to mimic and work alongside when we the way we have built Ptex throughout the years. When we spoke, we, when we speak about culture, leadership, and so on and so forth, I'll never forget those moments um, sitting in the headquarters of of Keep. And having those, I think it was called the um, um, the leaders forum, elite forum, elite, elite forum, elite forum, yes. yeah. Uh-huh. And having those aha moments as far as leadership and understanding really how how leaders need to react and how leaders need to be able to drive their business forward and their people and so on and so forth. And also leads me to the conversation is that as much as you built a product, you had the heart for the small business owner, and and I think it comes from, you know, speaking about your book. Conquer the Chaos. Yeah, the first version, and now you came out with the second version, which is ultimately, it's not just a product and and here's a product that you could offer and it's a better solution than anybody else. Um, as you said before, you opened up a new category because you saw the chaos in small business and you saw where the bottlenecks are that's, literally, that's not allowing them to grow. So I, I guess... What was the what was the premise of the first book, and what have you seen, uh, you know, in the process of the last couple of years, where you decided, you know, what, it's time for an upgrade? Yeah, the first book was really about marketing automation and what's possible for small businesses when they do that. And over the last decade plus since the book came out, what's happened is automation has spread all across the business, and what's happened is the technology that's available to people has improved dramatically. And what's happened is the world has changed and now there's AI and there, you know, there's so many different components to what small businesses can do. The world has changed a lot and our product has changed a lot to enable customer, small business customers to automate. And so I started to feel about a year ago, I said to Scott, my, my co-founder and co-author, I said, you know, I think that we need to do a, a, a new version of the book. I think we need to update it because if you look at our product now, what you know what it is now versus what it was back then, and if you look at what's happening in the in the world and in the market, I just think it's time for an, an update. So, Manny, I thought I was going to update about twenty percent of the content, <laughs> and it it turned into about ninety percent new. It was it was so there was so much that changed. 
And I'm so excited about the book. I, I love the book. It truly is the book I wish I could have read 20 years ago as an entrepreneur. And so it is Conquer the Chaos, the Six Keys to Success for Entrepreneurs. And it's the three personal keys and the three business keys. That's really what it's all about is helping, helping entrepreneurs be successful, but not just in their business, in their personal lives, because, you know, I define success in the book as balanced growth in your business and personal life. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a line that I've used many times in Dave Ramsey, which is a business will never outgrow its leader. Yeah. And which means in, in every given time, like if, if you are not growing yourself on the same parallel with your business, ultimately one of them will out, you know, um, at one, one of them will, will actually stay flat. Yeah. Let's dive into some of those, those, the six, um, the six, um, pillars of, of the book. And then maybe, uh, we'll dive into one of them or two just to, to give our audience a little bit of a taste. Okay, that sounds great. So um, I'm happy to take it however you want. I can ex I can explain the three personal keys, the three business keys, if you'd like. Is that would that be most useful? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what you know you kind of have to start with the fact that entrepreneurship is really fun and exciting and challenging. You know, there's trials and triumphs, but amidst all of that, there is a tendency for the dark side of entrepreneurship to emerge. And I've, you know, I didn't really talk about this in the first book, but over time I've been able to see this and I've, I've, I've watched it in entrepreneurs and customers all across the, the spectrum in small business. And what I see is that whether we are dealing with a ma major trials and challenges or whether we are dealing with great triumphs in our business, there is a dark side to entrepreneurship that pulls the small business owner into it. And it it's like you almost become enveloped by the business, you know, wrapped up in the business. And it, it consumes so much more of you than you thought you were going to need to give to the business when you started it. And so this quest for freedom kind of gets, you know, it kind of gets stamped out. And, and even people will say, yeah, but when the business is really successful, it actually happens almost more when the business is, is successful because we kind of become addicted to it. We get so enamored with the business that it crowds out everything else in our lives. And so, you know, I, one of the reasons I wrote the book is because I had become personally acquainted with the dark side and coming very close to seeing what that looks like. And, and I had seen it with so many friends and family members and customers and partners. And so to me, this book is a, a labor of love as much as it is what I've learned over 20 years, you know, more than two decades now in serving small business. And so you have to start with that premise. I think on that note is, um, and I've, I speak to so many business owners myself as well, the, the exactly for the reason they started the business, all of a sudden they get sucked in and ultimately say at one point they wake up, why, why am I doing this? You know, I thought I'm doing it for a totally different reason. And I, a matter of fact, it's taking more of my time, more of my everything. Right. No, you're, you're exactly right. And, um, and, and so they, they feel, you know, sort of disenchanted with the business. Sometimes they get really frustrated with it or their family gets frustrated with it. So when you start with that, you go, okay, well, how do, then how do we achieve success? How do we get balanced growth in our business and our personal life? And, you know, this, these three personal keys come from lots of research, um, literally millions of dollars spent with consultants and coaches. I mean, this is not just something I came up with one, one day and it's, it's, it, it came, by the way, in the, in the first edition, I didn't write nearly much, nearly as much about the personal side. I did talk about the mindset, but, but I hadn't, I didn't have the, the perspective yet of having done this for, two plus decades and seen it with hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs. And so I'm so grateful for that opportunity and what I've had the, the ability to, to do in, and see over the past couple of decades. But so here are the three, the three keys to, to success from the business side, for the, or from the personal side for the entrepreneur. The first one, as I mentioned, is mindset. It all starts with the mindset. And, you know, and people say, 99% of success is between the ears. It's absolutely true because we take actions based on what we think. And we, and so when we get our thoughts right, it, it actually drives the actions that, um, that lead to success. So we've got to, we've got to cultivate a mindset of success. That's number one. Number two, it's not just a mindset 
that is, you know, propelling us in any particular direction. It's we've got to get a vision that of our lives. It's a personal vision. So I'm not talking about the business vision. I'm talking about the personal vision. And when we get that personal vision, now we can start to channel our mindset and our energy in the, in the right direction. And then the last one is what I call the rhythm of execution. So it's one thing to have a personal vision with a plan, but how we execute that on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual, you know, there's a rhythm to it. And by the way, I, I, call, I call it a rhythm, not a routine. I call it a rhythm, not a rut. I call it a rhythm because entrepreneurs... We can do amazing things with rhythm, but if we get stuck in ruts, uh, we we lose our creativity. We lose the we lose the ability to to produce amazing outcomes. And so, the three personal keys are mindset, vision, and rhythm. And those are on the personal side. And in the book, I lay out how to achieve that, how to put together, how to get your mindset right, how to get your how to set your vision personally. Most most entrepreneurs haven't done this. They set the vision for their business, but they don't set. And you know, we, we go through this vision setting in elite, as you might recall on the business side, but it was so fun to go back and write the, the, you know, the second uh, edition of the book and put time into the vision creation for our lives. And then the rhythm of how we execute to that. Hey listeners, are you struggling to create beautiful looking proposals? Is it a hassle every time you need to prepare a quote or proposal for your clients? Is collecting signatures still a manual process? Well, it's time to upgrade to Pandadoc. At PTAX, we use Pandadoc for all our proposals, employee documentation, and so much more. It saves us time, keeps everything organized, and our documents look incredibly professional. With customizable templates, real-time collaboration, and e-signatures, Pandadoc turns creating documents into quick and easy steps. Plus, it integrates with so many other tools, streamlining your workflow and boosting productivity. Try Pandadoc today by visiting ptex.co slash Pandadoc and start your free trial. Trust me, it's going to be a game changer for your business. That's ptex.co slash P-A-N-D-A-D-O-C. Yeah, I, you know, I, I love this. Uh, I have this pet peeve where I would start, you know, speak to a business owner, I would say, do you have any any personal goals? He says yes, and he starts rambling off everything he has for the business. <laughs> right. And I said, no, no, I'm talking about your personal life. He says, what do you mean? This is uh, and and uh, you know, people that listen to me for a while know I have a very similar process on on creating your, you know, the four tires of of a car, which is the spiritual, health, financial, and family goals, and and on the personal side. And for our listeners that don't know about it, they could download it from ptxgroup.com slash goals. And I've gone through this exercise with hundreds of entrepreneurs. And and it's such an eye-opening um, exercise, as you mentioned, your own personal vision. And the reason for that is because you are disconnected from your business. You also have a business. You could see f- phenomenal, successful entrepreneurs that might have, fun- they, they would have phenomenal personal lives and they might have multiple businesses in their career. So you can't give away your whole life for that one division of the business. Yeah. You have to have your own vision of what's important to you. Yeah, that that is so well said. And it's very, very common when you look at the uh, all the programs out there for entrepreneurs, they are about building the business, you know, and, and, and they should be. I mean, the business is, you know, what we think about as entrepreneurs, but... If the entrepreneur hasn't take time, taken time to get clear on their personal vision and how the business fits into it, then then the business takes over. And and so when you get, you know, people might hear this and go, okay, yeah, sure, sure. Well, that, that's that's great. But how you actually do it is what I go through in the book. I, you know, I lay out your life vision, which is the life vision is made up of your identity, your purpose, your values, your mission, and your goals. And, and once you get your identity right, you know, all of the, all of the science around habits set, about setting habits and establishing those, it's all very clear that when our mind is set to the right identity, then habits take over, you know, to take over very naturally. And so, you know, I go from key, you know, the number one key is mindset. And then I go right into vision that starts with, we'll take that mindset and get it, get your identity right. Because once you're clear on your identity, then 
the rest of your vision can start to fall into place. And that vision is a purpose. This you know, should sound familiar on what we talked about in Elite because on it's the same thing on the personal side. Once you get your identity, then it's your purpose, why you exist, your values, how you go about living your life, and your mission, what you're up to in your life. And and that's a it's not an easy thing to just discover it one day. It takes a little time to work at, but when when you put your time your 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 mind to it, you can really establish that purpose, that values, your your values, your mission, and then you create the goals. And you know, I I explain how you set the goals in five areas of life. And this is where the balance really comes into play. And it's the kind of the crux of the whole thing. The five areas of life for an entrepreneur that I recommend and that I take them through in the book are um physical, spiritual, social, business, and financial. And sometimes people will say, well, aren't business and financial the same thing? And I say, no, 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 you can have your business goals and the, your, you know, your life vision does have to have some drive towards your business goals. But a lot of times the business goals can be happening, but it's not coming translating into the financial goals that you have for saving or investing or creating the wealth that you want for your family. And so you have to have business goals and financial goals and the social goals, you know, those can incorporate your hobbies, your leadership, your, you know, the different um, different areas that bring some balance to your life, some fun and enjoyment. And then, of course, your physical is taking care of your body and your spiritual is making sure that you are tuned spiritually to what matters most. And that's really critical because a lot of times the business will start to play games with us and we lose sight of what matters most. So when you think about the vision, it's identity, purpose, values, mission, goals, and those goals broken into five areas. Once you've got those goals laid out, then it li- it goes right into the rhythm of execution of how you work on those five goals, breaking them down from lifetime to 10-year, three-year, one-year, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and where the magic happens, which is in the daily morning mastery, as I call it. Yeah. So what I loved about the book is the part um, on the rhythm part, because there's a lot of people that will hear a good podcast, will listen to, um, to a good audio book or, or actually read a good book or, or even a lecture. And they'll speak about the importance of setting goals and they'll m- might do the exercise of actually setting goals. But if they don't fi- figure out how they're going to execute it, it stays a piece of paper. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's okay to start slowly. If you have that mindset, you have to go. But if you find that rhythm, what works for you, and, and you get that, you know, almost that ha- a hold, you know, holding your hand as far as what comes first, what comes second, you, it becomes bite-sized pieces that you can start executing. If you start executing, you start seeing the results. If you see your results, it builds momentum to do more and more and more. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and um, you know, I... I talk about this in the book and I, I tell people as I lay it all out, I say, look, this might be a lot for you. You know, you, this, you're going to, you're going to say, whoa, this is a whole bunch of stuff. And, and I'm saying, well, here are the principles of success. And instead of getting overwhelmed by all that it is, break it down to the most critical aspects. And I, in the book, I call it the three transformative habits. They will, they will transform a life if, if people will do these three things and it's where, it's where the life vision and the rhythm of execution comes together. And those three transformative habits are wake up early, plan your weeks and do quarterly retreats to evaluate the past quarter and plan the next quarter. I am confident that when people do those three things, they will shape an extraordinary life. Wow. So let's, let's turn to the business side of things. So the three, uh, the three parts of, uh, that goes into the business planning. Yeah, so the three uh, the three keys to business uh, on this uh, business success are strategy, automation, and leadership. And strategy actually breaks into two parts. It's the customer strategy and the company strategy. And so the company str- the customer strategy is all about who we are for our customers, what we do, you know, what's the what do we deliver for them, and and and, and how do we systematically deliver for our customers to produce great customer success, great you know, customer satisfaction and happiness. That's the customer strategy. And we, we talk about that all the time as executing a, a customer life cycle. You know, you get your, your customer strategy in place, your customer life cycle in place. And then it's all about effectively moving the customer through your life cycle through a process of follow-up. And as you know, most small businesses don't grow effectively because the follow-up breaks down. They don't have a good customer strategy and, and good customer follow-up. So we help them get clear on that in this the customer aspect of strategy. 
Then we go to company strategy, and this is where it's about your purpose, your values, your mission as a company. Now, not not as the individual, but as the company. And so that's that's strategy. Then automation is really about automating that customer lifecycle, so that instead of having a lead come is come in, you know, a lead comes in, and you've got to kind of work that lead through a manual process. You want to automate it as much as possible and have the manual intervention apply when necessary. And, and then it should be that way all the way through the customer experience. And you can do that through the marketing, the sales, the service, even your internal operations can be driven through that kind of automation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People confuse automation with, okay, I'm, I'm taking away the personal touch. Automation is totally not that. Automation is actually just to create that process, automate those steps. Sometimes that might be getting it, sending you an email who you need to follow up with one on one. Yes. And then creating that personal touch through the, through the follow up. Cause you can do that through automated follow up that's very personal. And, and, um, especially with AI that takes into account all of the, you know, the interactions that you've had with them, key pieces of information. Um, you know, it's just, it's really fun to create personalized automated follow up, especially with AI. I want to speak about the, the final key, which is leadership. And I think this is something so important and, and something that obviously I've seen you demonstrate with the, the, the full leadership team at, uh, at Keep all these years. I have a fundamental question when it comes to leadership in general, which is something that I've heard a lot of other business owners um, wrestle with is, let's say they're starting a company, a small business, they have two or three or four employees already in the company. How much of the vision of the company is based on the leader, founder, versus how much do they need to bring in their team in, in creating that strategy of where the company is going as a whole? Yeah, this is such a great question, Manny, because the answer is neither a dictatorship nor a democracy. It's in between. And there's a co-creation that needs to occur because if you, if, if it's, if you just come down and say, well, here are the, you know, here's the way it is, you know, um, it doesn't work so well. You know, I think we all know what happens when you just put something in stone, come down from the mountain and say, here it is, everybody. You know, they tend not to follow too well. <laughs> so, so on the other hand, if you, as the leader, just say, okay, well, we're just going to all create this together. You, you lose some of the direction and understanding and inherent wisdom that the founder has. And, and so that's not a good outcome either. And the way that I describe it is the smaller your organization, the higher the percentage of the entrepreneur's, you know, fingerprints are on the plan. Obviously, if it's just you, then it's going to be not all you, by the way, it'll be mostly you. And then you'll go get some perspective from some advisors, some friends, some other people, because if it's just you living in an echo chamber, that doesn't work either. So now what if you have five people? Well, then it should have, you know, maybe it starts to look like it's about half you and about half the others that have, you know, kind of have their perspective. And if it's about 10 people, maybe it's about 30% you and it starts to, you know, and, and it's like, well, people go, okay, well, I hear that, but how do you actually do it? And here's how you do that. We teach this in elite as we teach leaders how to set their vision and get everybody in alignment to it. And it's an iterative process. And the more people you have, the more, the more, the more people that are in the company, the more, the more employees you have in the company, the, the more iterations you have in the process. So if it's, if it's, uh, you know, you and a, a handful of people, you kind of come up with a very rough draft. And, and this is really, really important. If you bake it too much, then your team can't really shape it with you. So you come up with kind of a very rough draft and then you spend time together working on it. And then you might set it on the shelf and come back a week later and spend a little more time working on it. And you spend a little time strengthening and getting to the point where it's like 90% of the way there that you can say, okay, this is our working draft. Let's work at it this way for the next, you know, maybe two to three months, and then we'll revisit it and kind of finalize it. Now, if you've got 25 people in your business, 
you need to add an extra an extra uh, an extra iteration to that where the leader does a very rough draft and then the team kind of puts together a draft and then the, the the leadership team and then they start to bring in some of the employees and get them on board with it and and then only once you've kind of got everybody nodding their heads you don't need perfect unanimity but you need people like yeah this is it like this is you know we're going in the right direction here then you publish it with the word draft in big word big letters on it so people know that it's a working draft and you spend two or three months and invariably there'll be some a few words here a few things that'll change and you can tighten it down now you've got you know, in a period of 90 days or so, you've got your go forward plan of how you are running the business with your purpose, your values, your mission. And, and that's, that's what then everything begins to execute to. And that leads to the, the third, the third key to success, which is leadership. And frankly, it's taking that strategy that we just talked about and then hiring, coaching and firing to it. And that leadership is the, is the key. Yeah, so so I, I want to ask you um, another question because um, we were speaking about company culture. I know that throughout the years um, you have been a, a huge advocate of creating a, a culture of excellence. Uh, you know, it's not just about perks. It's not just about cereal. It's not about babysitting service. It's about a culture of excellence in a company. We've seen a lot. Companies spend a lot of money on culture, and then sometimes they'll have private equity, VCs come in, destroy the culture, so to speak, but it's all about the bottom line. And, and the, one of the reasons, sometimes they're disconnected from the business, but a lot will depend, will, because on the PNL, they don't see a ROI on company culture. We need to set the record straight. How do you justify spending money on company culture um, as a good ROI for the company? Hmm, that is such a great question. And let me just double down on your point that so often when we just, you know, count the beans and look at the numbers, we miss how important the people are that make it all work. And so, you know, I think you've got to subscribe to a theory that says people before profits and the profits will follow. And that's very important. If you just say people before profits, you might lose sight of the fact that we we are in business to create profit. We need to do that. Um, but if you just say, hey, you know, we're all about profits and the profits will follow, you miss the key point that it, it the profits follow because you have great people that are doing great things and are aligned to the vision, the purpose, values and mission of the company. So I appreciate your point. And I would say we we have to understand that profits happen in a business because of great products and great people and great process that we put in place. This is, you know, automation is what, what drives this, right? So people, you know, pro- people, products, and process are what produce the profit. And if we don't subscribe to that theory, then we end up going and, you know, wagging the, you know, wagging the, the dog by the tail because we think we've got a hold of profits, but we don't realize that it's, it's people and pro- products and, and process that actually produce that. So I appreciate your point. And I, and maybe the, you know, it's easy to say these things in, in concept, but this is where putting your purpose, values, mission in place and truly hiring and coaching and firing to it is so crucial. And it's what I would say is probably the, the most, um, misunderstood aspect of leadership that it's really about establishing that culture. You know, pe- people see leadership and they think it's standing up in front of people and, you know, let's go take the hill and speaking and, and, but you know, that's a, that sometimes leadership manifests itself that way, but it's really about being clear on the core, being clear on the purpose of the company, why we exist, the values of how we go about doing what we're doing and the mission that we're up to. And when you do that, and you do that in a, in a very intentional way, then all of the manifestations of leadership sort of happen naturally. They, you know, the, the standing up and speaking it and the, you know, um, getting on, getting, getting out in, in, you know, in, in media and being able to, uh, rally the troops when there's a challenge or, you know, all those things, those come out of, of a clarity around our purpose, our values, our mission, and getting those rock solid. And 
hiring to it, coaching to it, and fi- coaching to it, and firing to it. Got it. Um, you have built a company from the ground up, and obviously, with technology, you've been uh, throughout the years you've been pivoting the product and iterate like different iteration of the products in order to adapt to what the market needs and ultimately what small businesses um, um, need. You've always had, as I mentioned before, a soft spot to small businesses. And the book um, title is, is, um, you know, Conquering the Chaos. Yeah. Let me ask you point blank. Is there a way, is there a possibility to tell business owners that, yes, you could conquer the chaos or business is, there's always going to be a chaotic moment in a business life. <laughs> it is possible to conquer the chaos. Um, and it is, it is not something that you just have to accept as part of growing pains in small business. Some people just say, oh, I, you know, just, I just accept it. And those are the same people that say, oh, there's, you know, balance is a, is not something you can actually achieve. Um, now, having said that, it doesn't mean that there's never any chaos and there's never any imbalance. So let me, let me talk about chaos the way I talk about balance in the book at the beginning. When I say we should strive for balance in our business and personal life, and I say success is balanced growth in our business and personal life, I fully acknowledge that there are times of imbalance. And so if we're going to be so rigid and literal to say, well, you know, I'm not living a balanced life because yesterday at 4.30 in the afternoon, I was, you know, totally out of balance. That's not it. It's, it's much like walking a, a, if you think of a balance beam, and I, I describe it this way in the book, when you're on a beam, it's, it's very clear that you're either on or you're off. But in business and in life, it's more like a path. And, the the reality is we weave back and forth across that path. And sometimes we're on the path and sometimes we're off the path. In other words, sometimes we're on balance and sometimes we're off balance. But the real key is to not stray so much that you can't get back on quickly. It's to, it's to be moving ever, you know, ever striving to be on that path. And the more we do that, the higher the percentage of time that we're on the path, that we're on balance. And so I, I completely reject the notion that we should not strive for balance. And I also accept that sometimes we're going to be out of balance. But life in, and business are about working at being in balance. Okay, so take that analogy and you can all imagine, you know, we can all imagine that we, that we, that we veer off of the, the path of balance at times. But if we're, if we're committed to it, our deviations become more and more slight and our, t- our percentage of time on the path is greater and greater. Now take that analogy and apply it to chaos. And where chaos in a business is things feel out of control, where um, we're spinning our wheels and not really getting traction, where there's complaints and frustrations from employees and customers and family members, where there just don't seem to be enough hours in the day and we wish we could replicate ourselves where things are slipping through the cracks left and right and you've got egg on your face because you dropped the ball with a customer or a, you know an important partner or whatever. That's what chaos looks like. But we don't have to accept that. And we don't have to say, well, that's just the way it is. And we can actually work at plugging the holes in our business so that we don't have time and money leaking out, which is what, you know, if, if you just had to sim- simplify and say, well, what is small business chaos? It's the leaky bucket that time and money is just dropping out of and you can all we can all feel it and it causes lots of frustration well we can plug the holes it's very possible and we can get we can do that through effective strategy and effective um automation and effective leadership and um you know certainly when we have the personal side with our mindset vision and rhythm we can feel very different about running our business. And that comes as we execute purpose values or or, or as we execute our mindset, vision, and rhythm. Yeah, beautiful. So business owners, you just hear it. Um, And if you need to rewind it and hear it again, um, there is place um, to conquer the chaos. But again, I think it starts with your personal side and it starts with mindset as the most important piece, uh, as you mentioned, between air and air. Because once you have the proper mindset, you know where you're putting your heart and the work and the daily activities to, 
ultimately you're much more in control versus you know you running the day versus the day running you and everything going in chaos that's right and i don't speak as a theorist this this is not theory you know to conquer the chaos is not theory it is practice but it is practice and as i say in the book practice makes progress it's not practice makes perfect practice makes progress that's or after the progression where more and more we're reducing the chaos we're getting rid of it and we're feeling that growth, the profit, the freedom in our business that we want. Beautiful. How could uh, people find out more about the book or even keep in general? Yeah, you bet. So they can go to conquerthechaosbook.com and there's a bunch of free resources there. I, you know, from on the mindset um, or on the personal keys to success, there's, um, there's resources there for the business keys as well. So conquerthechaosbook.com. And if they want to work on their the holes in their business and plugging those holes and getting their customer strategy right. Um, we do what we call a, a growth playbook and they can go to keep.com slash playbook. It's K-E-A-P, like keep going. We didn't even talk about the, what, the meaning of keep, but it's all about keep going, keep serving, keep growing your business. So keep.com slash playbook and you can, you can learn how to get your own uh, playbook there. It's great. For the links, resources mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes at www.ptechgroup.com slash podcast. And as I said in the beginning, we'll also link to the first episode with Clayt. So if you did not listen to that one, uh, we'll go back and listen to that one as well. Let's close with the four rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Number one, a book that changed your life. Think and grow rich. Amazing. Number two, a piece of advice you got that you'll never forget. Uh, the, the, the fortune is in the follow up. Fortune is in the follow-up. Number three, anything you wish you could go back and do differently? Yes. When we raised capital, I would have brought it into the business in tranches, in pieces, instead of like doing it all at once. It, it has a, it creates an arrival syndrome that you, you just can't unwire people from that. <laughs> Got it. And last and final question, what's still on your bucket list to achieve? I have not been to Italy with my wife, just the two of us. So that is on my bucket list. Cool. Clay, thank you so much for joining us. I know your time is valuable. That is why in the name of our listeners, we'll forever be grateful for sharing some of your time with us today. It's been a blast. Thanks so much, man. It's been awesome. I appreciate all you do. That's my conversation with Clay Mask. My takeaway from this one, number one, embrace automation. Automate various aspects of your business operations, from marketing and sales to internal processes to achieve growth, profitability, and freedom. Number two, use comprehensive tools. Utilize platforms like Keep to centralize and streamline your business processes, enhancing efficiency and effectiveness. Number three, understand the evolution of technology. Stay updated with technological advancement like AI to leverage new tools and strategies for business growth. Number four, develop a personal vision. Separate your personal goals from your business objectives to ensure a fulfilling life beyond dreams of your enterprise. And number five, implement customer lifecycle automation. Automate customer follow-up processes to ensure consistent and effective engagement, leading to higher satisfaction and retention. And that's a wrap for today's episode of the Let's Look Business podcast. I hope you enjoyed the practical, no-nonsense advice that our guests shared. If you found value in listening, I would be so grateful if you could share the episode with your friends and if you could give the show a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever platform you listen. Subscribe to the show and get notified every time we publish a new episode. The Let's Talk Business Podcast is a P-Tex Group original production. Until next time, make it a great day.